Looking for fast external storage is not really that easy. There are tons of different options out there from ready-made SSDs to NVMe SSDs with housings. Now in this specific video, I'm talking about these four housings for NVMe SSDs. And if you wanna learn more about their speed and all of those comparisons, then you can check out a link in the description or up here. I also have a couple of other videos around this topic and also comparing these NVMe SSDs to ready-made SSDs from Samsung, the T7, and from Crucial, the X8. And those videos are also linked in the description below. Now, first of all, and for transparency, all of these have been provided to me so that I can make videos and comparisons about these. Now, the companies are not getting any input on this and they also don't see these videos before they go live here on YouTube. So what you get here is my honest opinion about these drives how they're made and their usability. Now, I'm not going to go through this list in any particular ranking. I'm going to take this based on their name and starting with that, I'm going to choose the Acasis as the first one to take a look at. Now, the Acasis NVMe SSD housing is a USB 4 compatible USB-C housing. That means it is also compatible with Thunderbolt 4 and boasts a speed of up to 40 gigabits. This is also the cheapest USB 4.0 housing in this lineup. Now I have the housing right here with a NVMe SSD inside, but we are also going to take a look into the packaging. And on the outside, this is a paper box or cardboard. And then on the inside, you have thermal pads as well as one more of these knobs. And I'm gonna talk about this in a moment. You also have the back cover. Of course, that is usually put together. And you have this piece of, I don't know, styrofoam or however you're calling this and of course a manual. Now the packaging itself is not all that interesting. What I find good is that they're not using any hard plastics, but I also don't know how good this here is for the environment in comparison to any hard plastic. But that's just one thing that might be interesting when talking about another of these packagings. Now something that only this SSD housing has that none of the others support is actual screwless workings. So you have a bit of a rubbery piece right there. So you can take out the SSD and there you have this rubbery piece and you actually have two of those. So one is also in this packaging right here and you have two of these rubber pieces which hold the NVMe SSD in place. So you can simply just plug this in, push it into the connector and then what I found works best is just to basically place this back here where a screw would go. When it's in there, you can just simply push down and now the NVMe SSD is completely in its place and ready to roll. Now you also have these thermal pads right here, which you can put onto the SSD and that also helps with heat dissipation. And then if you wanna close it off, you just take the lid, place it like so, push and it is closed. And with that, you have a completely closed NVMe SSD housing with its USB-C port right there. And with that, you're ready to go. So this is a really cool housing if you, for example, also want to change these out. So you can just simply pull here and then you can again replace the NVMe SSD simply by pulling out the plug right there and you're ready to go. Now I found this really interesting that this is the cheapest USB 4.0 housing that has this specific feature and makes it really interesting in my opinion and kind of innovative. However, you might also see this as a downside because you can just accidentally pull it apart. But to be honest, when I look at how strong or firmly this is connected together, I don't think this is accidentally going to happen in your backpack. And lastly, I almost forgot to mention, you also get this USB-C to USB-C cord. And this is about half a meter in length. And with that, actually a really nice and usable length, which not all of the others are going to have. The next housing based on alphabetic sorting is the IC Box USB Type-C compatible with USB up to 3.2. Now I have made a video specifically about this, that this combination of housing with Mac OS or rather the MacBook Pro lineup and the M1 Mac mini as well, is not going to give you the full power that this housing actually can provide. This drive is actually rated for 20 gigabits per second in terms of its transfer speed. However, with Mac OS or rather the MacBook lineup and all of those machines right now, it is only going to give you about 10 gigabits per second. But that's not to say that this is not going to be an interesting choice because it is only costing about 48 euros. And that is, in my opinion, one of the big pluses for this drive. It may only give you 1000 megabytes per second in read and write speed, but for just 48 euros, 
I think this is pretty much a no-brainer if you have a NVMe SSD lying around and you just want to make sure that you can get more use out of that with, for example, this external housing. Now, when we go in and look at the packaging, you can see that this pretty much is all paper. And that is something that I mentioned is actually not the same for all of the housings. Now, I find this is a nice touch because it reduces the plastic waste, and that's always a good thing. On the inside, you will find a copper piece, which you can use to connect the NVMe SSD drive with the outside of the housing so that the cooling is actually better. Then on the inside, we also have a manual. We have a bit of a happiness card. We have two thermal pads, which are necessary to basically connect the NVMe to the copper and then the copper to the outside housing. Then you have a USB-C to USB-A cord, but also a USB-C to USB-C cord. Also, you get this nice part, which you can use to place in here when you're done with the assembly to glue over the screw pieces right there so you don't accidentally lose those screws or something like that. It also is supposed to basically help with the glowing effect of the LED that is inside of there and make this more tightly sealed, so to speak. And you also get a screwdriver with all of this. Now, when you take out these screws right here, then you can slide out the inner piece, which is basically this sled-like thing. And there you have a normal screw right there. And you can open that up to take out the NVMe and place a new one inside. Once you are done, you just push this in again, put two of those screws right there, and the housing is completely closed again. I think this is overall a really great package, especially with the additional copper piece for the heat dissipation, as well as providing two cables, one for USB-A and one for USB-C. Overall, a nice deal. Next up, we have the Orico, and this is the NVMe drive right here. In my opinion, this is actually probably one of the prettiest drives, especially when you also put on the top cover, which you kind of slide in like so, and then you have a screw, which you can place right there, so this is a closed cover. Now, this again is, in my opinion, probably one of the prettiest NVMe housings in this lineup with the heat dissipation parts on the top right here, this ribbing right there, and also this piece right there where you can basically put this onto a leash of some sort. Now, looking into the packaging, you have the paper around here, and then on the inside, you have pretty much all plastic. You have this inside piece where you find the SSD, the whole packaging pieces right there. You have a extremely short USB-C to USB-A cable, also a thermal pad right there, and of course a bit of a manual and all of those things. And of course there's also a USB-C to USB-C cable with it so that you can also connect it to those kind of devices. And lastly, for the assembly and disassembly, of course, a screwdriver, which is specific to the screws that are inside of this device because those are not the normal cross type they are actually a slight differentiation there. So that's pretty much everything that you get in the box for the Orico, and this totals about 180 euros, supports USB 4.0 with, again, 40 gigabits of transfer speed, and they are also citing about 2,700 megabytes per second in transfer speed in the read department and 1,405 in the write department. I think overall a solid housing and of course also a solid package. In my opinion, the cable could be a little longer. This is just about 20, 25 centimeters. And in my taste, this is really, really short if you want to place this somewhere near your computer. And especially for me, when I travel, I have my computer on a roost or a next stand, which alleviates it from the desk a little bit. And this way with this short cable, this is kind of always just halfway in the air, which is not necessarily the best experience. And last but not least, we have the Yoda Master. Props to them for having the smallest packaging. However, they also have the, I don't know, stupidest design in terms of the device way that you can actually replace the SSD, because in this case, it is actually so much more work to get there. Now, this is the way that you have the box completely set up. And if you were to have it completely closed, you have the USB-C port right there. However, to open it up, you have a screw right there to undo that. Then you have the back cover. And right then and there, you notice there's no NVMe SSD anywhere to be seen. And the reason for that is that you actually have three screws in each corner right there and there to actually undo all of those to then 
lift up the whole board to then be presented with the NVMe SSD on the inside of this housing. And that's specifically in the most expensive housing of 190 euros. It's a USB 4.0 housing, which supports a theoretical connection of 40 gigabits per second. Then you also have the read speed of 2,700 megabytes per second and a write speed of 1,400. But why did it have to be this complicated to get to the NVMe SSD? I don't get it. Why not flip this hole around and make it that much more easy. Probably the only main reason why this makes sense is because this is the up side. So this is the way that usually faces to the top, which also means that the NVMe should be facing that way for cooling purposes. But why not just make this side the cover or whatever? Like that would have been the perfect solution. One that also Rico, for example, chose. Now to also take a look inside of the packaging, you also slide this out like so. You have plastic inside and basically this is also a plastic box. Then we have the screwdriver. We have a USB-C to USB-A cord. You have again two of the pads for thermaling as well as one little thing that you can use to basically connect this to whatever you want to carry it around with. Then of course we also have a USB-C cable that I used for all of my tests and once again it is a relatively short one that is only about 20-25 centimeters. And last but not least we have tons of screws because again this whole setup that the NVMe SSD is actually on the inside and not on the side that you simply open up and you're done with it. For being the most expensive housing, I was surprised how complicated it was to set up and get this inside there. You kind of have to handle this with a lot of care when you are testing multiple NVMe drives, which is maybe not the normal use case, but you're actually having this in your hands, which is not the case with any of the other drives. Now, one thing that I also noticed is that the tip of the screwdriver is not really a good fit for the screw that you have to tighten and loosen here to get the NVMe fastened to the motherboard or to this board. So that's also something that I would complain about. There could have been a better screw placement in this housing. Now, I hope this overview of these different housings, what comes in the package, and of course also how usable are those different housings in different circumstances was interesting for you. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up. That's always greatly appreciated. And if you wanna shop any of these, you can check out the links in the description. That always helps out when you shop through those links with no extra cost for you. If you have interest in all of those other videos, those are also linked in the description below where I check the speed comparisons for all of these different housings with up to four different NVMe SSDs. I also have a video talking and comparing the X8 from Crucial to the T7 from Samsung, as well as comparing it to those individual NVMe SSD housings, how those compare in terms of speed and price. With all that said, I hope you have an amazing day. Choose your NVMe SSD housing wisely, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.